We begin in Mexico and a new direction for that nation with a populist candidate now elected president. Early results show Andres Manuel López Obrador won about 53 percent of the vote in Sunday's election. The leftist candidate ran on an anti-corruption platform. He promises to build stronger relations with the United States and other countries, also promising to tackle domestic issues like crime and economic inequality. In his speech, López Obrador talked about uniting Mexicans of all political views. Listen. The new project for the country will seek to establish an authentic democracy. We are not betting on building a, di a dictatorship, neither overt nor covert. Changes will be profound, but they will adhere to the legal order that is established. And all this taking place at the epicenter of Lopez Obrador's support, Zocalo Square. That's where our Patrick Ottman filed this report. Mexicans are celebrating what many are calling a revolution for this country. You see people pouring into the square to behind me to celebrate an event they never thought would took place, the election of leftist populist candidate Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. He's been running for president now for over a decade. This is his third attempt at the office. Previous attempts, he said, kept him from gaining office because of corruption, not Right now, though, he has more than defeated the opposition. That's because more of Mexican society has mainly appealed over the years to the nation's poorest. But this election, he managed to reach out. So many people were struck by his anti-corruption message, his message uh, against the violence that is racking this country. But now the hard questions uh, will begin to emerge. How will he govern? How will he, for example, uh, confront Donald Trump over the issues that are so unpopular like the wall, uh, like the trade war. So those questions still remain, but Mexicans are out right now celebrating this very unlikely victory. Patrick Gottman, CNN, Mexico City. Let's bring in Karin Zissis to talk more about this. Karin, the editor-in-chief of the online division of the America's Society Council of the Americas, joining via Skype from Mexico City. It's a pleasure to have you uh, on the show this day, uh, day. Quite a busy uh, day there, surely, there in Defe. Uh, let's talk more about Andres Manuel López Obrador reframing himself as an outsider with a populist message similar to the U.S. President Donald Trump. That seems to have really resonated with voters. Well, yes, he 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 has reframed himself as an outsider candidate, but uh, he, this is his third time running, so third third time of a go when he made it. Um, and but he's in some ways not an outsider because he used to be a, a member of the party that's now in power, the PRI, the governing party. Um, and and over the years, he's been running. Uh, this is again, this is his third time running, and um, he tends to use the same language over and over. Uh, he constantly refers to the mafia del poder that controls power, um, and he speaks in a very direct, straightforward way. So voters are very familiar with him. Uh, they're familiar with his message. Um, and at a point when voters here are feeling very discontented, that was a message that reached them. All right, let's talk about some of the issues that mattered for voters. Uh, first, the problems with violence and corruption. How does Lopez Obrador promise to take on these problems more effectively uh, than predecessors? Well, that's part of the issue. Uh, he has talked uh, about uh, trying to end the issues of violence here, trying to end the issues with corruption here. But there's been some lack of clarity about exactly how he will do that. In terms of corruption, he's really responded to questions about that by saying that by being in office and, and leading by example, uh, that he will be able to reduce corruption. Um, but that's not really a clear proposal. So there are some concerns about how he's going to actually be able to carry it out. When it comes to trade relations with its neighbor to the north, Lopez Obrador seems open to continued talks on renegotiating NAFTA, but is also pushing for Mexico to become more self-reliant. Explain. Yeah. Well, he has made some references to uh, economic policies that would look at um, Mexico being self-reliant, particularly in terms of agriculture. Um, he's made references to uh, 
the campo, the countryside, being Mexico's greatest uh, factory, uh, is how it would translate. And um, so he, he is taking somewhat of an inward look. You know, he's, he doesn't speak English. Uh, he's not a particularly uh, much of a globalist himself. Um, and he has been winning. He won this election really based on the fact that he is focused on domestic issues. So there is a sense that he's taking some more of an inward look at the concerns of Mexicans because in this election, Donald Trump really hasn't factored into a reason why Mexicans are choosing the person they're going to vote for. Um, it hasn't. They, they, Mexican Mexicans uh, do not have a positive view of Trump. So any candidate who um, says things against the rhetoric is going to only win points with the electorate. Um, however, uh, that's not what people are deciding their votes on here, given some some so many of the big domestic issues looming here. And he's really been focusing on the domestic concerns. All right, similar to the U.S. president, uh, his rural appeal there in Mexico seems to have paid off. Karin Zissis, we appreciate your time and perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much.